tugging on that uh, that iced coffee. But I do want to say, for those of you worried about my uh, my health, having all this damn McDonald's, um, I am actually eating a little bit healthier, believe it or not. So I know I'm getting the fucking ginormo iced coffee and all this other stuff. So not so much there, but I have been eating some fruit. You know, for breakfast out here, because I do come kind of early. So I just come out here, get a big ass thing of iced coffee, and I'm also chomping down on some pineapple. So that's always nice. And it still helps me feel full and makes me feel like I'm having a, a healthy start to the day, if anything. So feeling a little better, baby. Um, breathing in that good ass prana. <laughs> Ooh. Been watching. Out of, uh, of infinite waters lately you know i don't know how you guys feel about him he's a little hippy dippy sometimes uh but it's always good for me it helps kind of motivate me and give me a little bit of uh a little bit of calmness whenever i listen to his videos you know sometimes that helps you know when i'm meditating or you know just doing breathing exercises and stuff it really it really does help to uh to do that sort of thing um, but yeah, just kind of sitting here, sipping iced coffee, and, uh, want to talk to you guys about, um, vlog 300, which is coming up very soon. Just, uh, just three more vlogs, three more vlogs before we get to vlog 300. And I've been thinking of different, <clears throat> different things that we could do. Now, I remember back in, for, uh, for vlog 200, we uh, we did a Q and A, so I'm thinking since it's been literally a hundred vlogs since then, and that was back when I was still in Japan, baby. Um, that was that was even before I got my apartment in Japan, actually. If I remember, yeah, that was before I got my apartment in Japan because I remember filming that at the MWR in Yokosuka, and they had this little um, kind of secluded sitting area, you know, separated by the little uh fancy uh separator things i don't know what they're called <laughs> separators i guess i don't freaking know but uh separate from all that so that way i could still vlog at a normal volume i can't be all like wacky and youtubery doing that sort of thing but uh yeah i can still talk and do q a and stuff like that without disturbing too many people you know if anything they think i was like talking to somebody or whatever um, so it kept the social anxiety a bit low. Uh, but yeah, man, friggin', I think it's, I think it's high time for a Q and A and maybe a bit of introspective as far as, you know, making 300 vlogs. Um, obviously I've made like, you know, well over a thousand videos overall, but, uh, as far as actual dedicated vlogs, you know, I've going on 300 now so that's pretty good pretty good indeed you know between doing the monthly update stuff uh doing other vlogs talking about different uh subjects in my life things like that um i've covered covered a wide gamut of material over the years you know i remember you know i remember even just looking back at my very first vlog you know that was right when I got my uh, my new Sanyo Zacti camera. Well, it was then new. Actually, it was used at the time, too. Um, I remember getting it off of eBay because I wanted something that was within my budget at the time, and I wasn't making shit over at Walmart. Uh, so I was looking up cameras and stuff, and the popular cameras at the time for YouTubing were the Zacti series of cameras as well as the flip cams, which... Neither of those are around anymore, <laughs> which goes to show my age on uh, on the platform. Uh, but yeah, none of those cameras are around anymore. Hell, even Sanyo, the company that made the Zac D, isn't even around anymore. They got bought out by Panasonic. So a lot of their camera models and stuff got absorbed into Panasonic, and I don't even think the Zac D series is even around anymore. Maybe some of the technology that was used has been incorporated into Panasonic's cameras or something. I don't friggin now but uh yeah they're not around anymore the flip cams aren't around anymore um despite the name 
the reason it was called flip cam is because there's a little USB dongle on the side you'd press and it would like flip open and it's the name flip cam and you just connected your computer after you recorded stuff again wasn't the best of cameras but it was cheap it was accessible and you know for youtube at the time it was pretty good so kind of was what it was but i wanted to flip out screen and again despite the name the flip cam didn't have a flip out screen it had a fixed screen on the back so, you know, since I was doing a lot of these selfie type videos, I wanted to make sure my head was in frame and all that kind of stuff. So, went for the Sanyo Zacti. And also because Tokyo Kuni used Zacti in his videos as well, but he had a more expensive model. So, I went for more of the entry level, cheapo budget version, you know, just to get me started. And then from there, I'd upgrade equipment and stuff. And. Uh, my first HD camera was still a Sanyo Zacti, but it was the uh, the SH-1, which that was full HD. That was 1080p and everything um, back when that was new. You know, I remember when HD first started. Uh, it's just some more Twitter stuff. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, I remember when uh, HD first started on YouTube. That was such a mind-blowing thing. I remember first switching over from even just 480p to 720 that was such a drastic change. And, you know, going from 720 to 1080, you know, you could see a difference, but it wasn't as dramatic as 480 to 720. That was just like, whoa, who turned the sharpener on? It's like you could see so much detail. And, of course, now you look at it, and even 720 videos are kind of grainy and just kind of like, eh. <laughs> but that was technology back in the day, baby. And, uh, yeah. So I've been doing a lot of thinking about, uh, you know, where I see these vlogs going and just, you know, how far I've come so far in, uh, in my journey in life and on YouTube as well. Because, you know, I've been doing the YouTube thing for a long friggin' time. Long time. And you know, I never did it with any intention of success or anything like that. I always, I always wanted it. You know, I thought it'd be nice to have, but really, um, I never, looking back on it now, you know, I never put in the amount of work that was needed to actually make it happen, you know. I always thought I did, but, you know, I was still in that old school YouTuber mentality of if you record it, they will come, which, you know, worked at first because, you know, YouTube was such a new platform and like anybody that was on making any form of content you know, had some sort of an audience and just people watching. And granted, the audience was a lot smaller back then, but it felt a lot more engaging, I think, just because, again, it was such a new platform at the time. And, uh, you know, people didn't really know what YouTube was going to be, you know? Like, nobody really predicted that it would be this media juggernaut that's, you know, overtaken cable TV and other mainstream media, you know, like... <laughs> People, kids, you know, nowadays are looking at being a YouTuber as a viable career option. You know, of course, then again, that's also competing with like astronaut and fireman and all this kind of other stuff. But, uh, you know, that was being a YouTuber wasn't even a thing that didn't even exist when I was in school, you know, high school or college. Well, my first round in college, anyway. Um, this, this didn't even exist as an option, you know? At best, you had Newgrounds, but that was only for, like, the animation community and, like, the Flash game community. Um, you didn't have vloggers or any of this other stuff that you got now. That stuff didn't even exist back then. Ugh. But it was, it was an interesting time. You know, I wouldn't say it was an awesome time because, you know, looking back on it now... You know, the connections were pretty shitty, and, you know, it, it's hard to look back on that because of how much we've seen progress on just the internet in general, not just YouTube. Um, we've seen different, and, you know, looking back on those old videos and stuff is, uh, you know, it gives me the, uh, the nostalgic-gasm, 
and I always have love for the older videos, but uh, if anything, it also shows a lot of the flaws of the early YouTube system, you know, where people didn't edit videos as cleanly as they used to, you know. A lot of them, when they were first starting off, they would use stuff like uh, Windows Movie Maker <laughs> or uh, uh, what's that? Uh, fuck. What's that uh, Apple movie? I think it's called iMovie or some shit. It's not Final Cut. It's the free version. I think it's called iMovie. Whatever the case. Um, a lot of people would end up using that too. Um, or maybe just some random ass shit you'd get from like Best Buy or Walmart. <laughs> I've seen so many uh, video editing programs like that too. Of eh, Quality. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's something I was thinking about. Of, you know, how everybody's saying, you know, gear doesn't matter. Equipment doesn't matter. Um, and all this other stuff, you know, what matters is that you want to make stuff. And there's a, certainly a nice sentiment to that, you know. It, it is important to, you know, it, it is important to, to overall just make stuff. But you should always make stuff with the goal of improving. Whether it's improving uh, just the way you put stuff together, the, the shots, the, uh, the clarity of of sound you know just the overall presentation and gear gear and equipment does play a part in that you know it's not everything but uh, it does play a part in that and I think that you should progress to the higher end gear over time you know if you just stay in gear over time you know if you just stay you know like hell if I just stayed with the same Sanyo Zakti <laughs> from 2008 like, nobody would be watching my videos at all because they would be in SD and even if I had my hand held out really far, like, it was not a wide-angle lens at all. It was a very tight lens. So, if, like, my arm is fully extended here, but, and it's, you know, I'm a fair distance away, but if it was on my San Zacti, like, it would look like this. <laughs> and I would still have my hand extended the same amount, you know? I mean, go back and look at some of those old videos. Like, I had my hand extended as far out as I could go, but my whole face would take up the frame and be like, hey guys, it's the Andy Son here, and today, uh, something awesome happened, and uh, we're going to, uh, to talk about that. You know, they, they, all, they all sound like that, and they all look like that. <laughs> you know, don't believe me, just watch. <laughs> but, uh, <coughs> excuse me, y'all got me started today. That old man Andy Sand started today. I'll tell you what, maybe that coffee's kicking in. I don't know. And we already had breakfast. Can I get a hello there? Something like that. Anyway, yeah, just uh, you know, life is uh, it's complicated, and uh, I've gone through a lot in this journey, and um, you know. As I release more of these these older videos, I hope that it puts some perspective into how far I've come in this journey. And I know that, again, I know that not a lot of people like those videos. I see a lot of thumbs down when uh, when I upload those. And, you know, I know that a lot of people are like, eh, you know, it just re-uploads, that's dumb, whatever. Um, but, you know, if anything, it's for my own perspective to show you know, on days like the other day when I was feeling really down about myself and my situation, you know, it helped put into perspective how far I've come, you know, online as well as in life. Um, and that's one of the neat things about doing YouTube long term like this. You know, you get to see a moment in time in your life and, you know, having done this as long as I have, it's really interesting to go back and see what I was doing back in 2008, 2009, even 2010 when I first joined the, the Navy, um, just to kind of see where my headspace was at that time, see um, what I looked like even, you know, because I got a little bit of the, you know, the neck fupa now, and it was kind of nice to see me with a you know, slim and trim neck. Didn't have to worry about the neck fupa. <laughs> and 
and uh, we might be getting to that, you know, getting rid of that soon. Um, you know, once I got it to Japan, because this, sh you know, dieting and shit is fucking hard in America, especially where I'm at. You know, maybe in California or something, it's a bit easier because there's a lot more health options and everything. But you know, here in the Midwest, where it's fucking meat and potatoes for everything, or some form of meat and carb, you know, it's noodles or whatever. You know, obviously that stuff's good, but it's not really good for you <laughs> um, if you eat it long term, you know. And on days where I'm thinking, you know, I'm I'm a little shaky and, you know, I'm feeling like you know, I should lose a little weight and stuff. You know, I look at some of these other people and I'm like, well, I'm not quite as bad as that person. And I know that's kind of bad to say. I know it's, it's really mean, but it does give me a little bit of a self-esteem boost of, you know, well, at least I'm not in their situation you know as shitty as that sounds whatever it helps me out in some way um but you know i even go back and look at some of my old pictures and old videos and stuff and i remember during those times i felt so fat and gross and that was another thing you know i don't know if i talked about this of you know my time in the military and this might be a separate video onto itself but here you go sneak preview <laughs> of a future Andy Talks Navy video possibly um, you know I felt um, you know I felt very I was very self-conscious of, of my weight during my entire time that I was uh, in the Navy because everybody was always working out and getting buff and you know, looking slim and trim and stuff. And, you know, I was never really interested in doing any of that. You know, if anything, I'd exercise or, you know, I'd go out for uh, bicycle rides. What the hell is that music? Anyway, <laughs> wherever the hell that was. Um, but I'd always, you know, do what I could to... Uh, at least be active and especially in a place like Japan where it's like super encouraged to be getting out and doing stuff you know it's like there's always something to do and even if there's nothing to do you could always just like walk around you know I could always get on my bike and you know just walk around the neighborhood or, or not walk if I was on my bike but like bicycle around my neighborhood <laughs> um, could even walk even but uh, I prefer bike because it's, it's just easier easier on the knees walking kind of hurts that shit after a while but you know it's just uh it's a lot more encouraged to uh to be walking or bicycling around in japan versus in america where you know it's it's kind of hard now in some places you know they got like bike lanes and stuff like that and it's a bit easier uh, especially in cities where there's you know the areas are a bit denser so you can go from place to place without having to like bicycle 10 miles or whatever um, in between. But, you know, living out in the, in the Midwest, everything is really spread out. So it's a lot easier to get by in a car. In a lot of, a lot of cases, it's the only way to really get around, you know, especially out here in the boonies, you know. Fucking, uh, yeah. So that was one thing that helped uh, keep the poundage down when uh, I was out and about, you know, just uh, go out and bicycle, you know, several kilometers. Um, and I'm even watching uh, Chris Broad from Abroad in Japan do his, uh, what do you say, like 2,000 kilometer cycle from uh, Tohoku, uh, someplace in Tohoku, I forget. That's like northern Japan, all the way down to Kagoshima, which is the southern, aside from Okinawa, it's the southernmost part of the main islands of Japan. So, uh, southernmost part of uh, Kyushu, I believe, which is the southernmost island, southernmost of the main islands of Japan. So, sorry, that was kind of <laughs> a little stilted there. But yeah, you know, watching his uh, his journey that there, you know, it's giving me the the itch to do something similar when I get out there. Maybe not to that extent. Uh, obviously, I'll have to get myself in shape for something like that or even something close to that but you know just cycling around town or 
<clears throat> going from place to place by bicycle, you know. Um, and it's definitely feasible to do, you know, especially out there. Um, you know, you just got to plan out the route and uh, get yourself in shape. And, you know, I can't wait to do that. You know, get the legs back in working order. Get this, uh, get this a little bit smaller. Um, I've been feeling a little bit. Yeah, you know, I feel like I have been losing a little bit of weight, despite all this eating McDonald's bullcrap. Um, I don't know if I am actually losing weight, but I do feel like it. You know, I don't feel as bogged down with crap, so that's good. Um, but yeah, man, friggin', you know, just getting excited for the future. Um, you know, uh, this is a very random vlog. I'm sorry. Uh, like 21 minutes in, it's kind of a random vlog. I'm starting to get hungry, so I might have to, might have to leave soon, grab some food, because I, I do got to go back, because I got to work here soon anyway, so that's what it is, but, uh, yeah, um, what was I? What was I talking about? Sorry, I'm <laughs> losing my train of thought here. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, but like I said, random blog, Sunflare. But yeah. Um, oh yeah. Updates for UNOH. Sorry, Jesus, that took me a hot minute. Um, but yeah, updates for UNOH. Um, got some emails back from them. Uh, they haven't given me an acceptance letter or anything like that just yet. But I have gotten some email correspondence through their admissions department and through the VA department for uh, different forms and stuff that, you know, I need to fill out should I be accepted to, to UNOH, which I should be. I don't see why not, but uh, you never know. Shit happens. <laughs> so once I get the acceptance letter to UNOH, then I'll start filling out these forms and getting all that set up and sign up for classes and you know, all this other stuff. Um, I might even go there this Friday, um, see what's going on. But I am really liking the, uh, the quick response that they've given me, you know, because I've only applied to UNOH like this week. I think it was on Monday. Yeah, it was Monday this week. So it's only been like, what, two days? Yeah, like two days. And I've already gotten two emails from the uh, the admissions department. Well, one from the admissions department, the other from the VA department there. Um, just got that one today. So I'm really liking the quick response time, um, even though they're largely scripted emails. But still, you know, it shows that they're kind of on it when it comes to that sort of thing. And, you know, looking forward to starting up class classes with them next year, uh, 2019. You know, like I said, um, 2019, I have a really good feeling about it. You know, I'm keeping very positive, which is good, especially because, you know, you guys know historically, uh, the fall time, fall and winter time is not a not a good time for my mental health. You know, I get a little bit shaky, baby. <laughs> so, you know, if I come out in vlogs and stuff where I'm, you know, not my usual happy-go-lucky self, um just uh i apologize in advance because <laughs> that does happen but so far so good i've been uh, really making a, a conscious effort to you know keep my mental health as a as a high priority and to notice changes in my mood and all that kind of stuff so i'm taking extra precaution you know i think ultimately a good sleep schedule has helped me out the most. You know, there's other little things that I do, but ultimately, if I only had to do one thing to help my mental health, it would be a good, consistent sleep schedule. I cannot tell you how much this has positively affected my mood overall. Like, you know, for me, because uh, sunlight plays a big part in my overall mental state, uh, it's just kind of how I am. It may be different for other people, but for me, <clears throat> sunlight plays a big part in that. So I've been focusing on waking up uh, with the sun or, or just uh, to uh, get more sunlight hours, daylight hours, um, versus like staying up really late like I used to, you know, like uh, 
you know, I think overall, once I start to uh, get going with, uh, with a lot of these things, you know, my goal is to wake up around probably 8 o'clock. Because I don't want to get up, you know, when it's still dark outside, because that's depressing. I've done that before. Um, but I want to get up around 8 o'clock. I've been kind of slipping a bit lately. I've been waking up around like 9-ish. <laughs> but, you know, I think maybe waking up around 8 o'clock. You know, cause sunrise is usually around 7.30-ish around these parts. So, uh, waking up around 8 o'clock when the sun's been up for a little bit. And uh, getting on with my day. Getting a good at least 7 to 8 hours of sleep a night. That has been essential for me. Um, it's been essential for my mental health. And it's allowed me to just work a lot more efficiently. You know, whereas creatively or at my job. You know, I'm just, I feel like, you know, I feel like I'm not running on empty or anything like that. I feel like I'm actually plunking away and that I'm a lot more in the moment when you know I get a full night's sleep and even last night like I went to bed around midnight ish you know maybe 12 12 30 and you know felt great got up around nine <clears throat> maybe a little before nine actually and uh actually it was 8 30 my bad <laughs> but still you know went to bed around midnight got up at 8 30 feel great you know got myself some iced coffee had some pineapple slices um feel great you know and uh we're getting this internet connectivity issue settled very soon so you're going to be seeing some more edited videos not just random live streams from mcdonald's like you've been seeing for a while although you guys have been enjoying those and i do appreciate the uh the feedback that i've been getting from from these live streams if anything it gets me out of the house so <laughs> That's a good thing, you know. I can't always be cramped in my room like all the friggin' time. So, you know, gets me out of the house. Get me, uh, give me some sunlight. Not exactly in the heart of nature, but, uh, you know. <laughs> gets me out of the house, which is always nice. And on these nice sunny days, you know, breathing the good, the good ass prana, baby. <laughs> and stuff like that. So, with that all said, I should probably get going here shortly because I got to get get lunch going and uh, get ready for work soon, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, wrapping up this live stream here. Um, just let me know what you guys would like to see in Vlog 300. Um, I'm gonna be doing a Q&A for that one for sure. Um, so be sure to ask me some questions down below in the booby boops to. Um, to be answered in vlog 300. Um, it can be about, about pretty much anything as long as it's you know relative to to me and my interests and stuff like that I guess I don't know <laughs> ask me anything whatever and uh, I'll do my best to uh, to put those questions on the the 300th vlog um, especially I'm especially looking forward to seeing what uh, what some of you new guys want to know because like I said I haven't really done a Q&A since vlog 200 and that was back in 20, 2013 actually so it was like about like five years ago since I last did a Q&A so yeah just be sure to leave me some questions down below in the boopy boops and for vlog 300 we'll do a QA and a section and then we'll do some other stuff beforehand just you know as an introspective I guess I don't know <laughs> Whatever the case may be. So, anyway, guys, with all that said, this is the Andy Son. Signing for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.